Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create relief images from pictures. So a relief image is something where we've got a slight three-dimensional object that can be put onto a flat surface. It's pretty typical of things that you saw in like Greek, Roman architecture. And this is a good example of it. And this has been made of two separate pictures. We've got the gladiator at the front, which is a sort of Roman gladiator, and then some Greek architecture in the back, which is probably making some historians want to punch me. But either way, it was just a nice demonstration of how we can take two photos and combine them together into one relief. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, all of the software we're going to use for this is going to be entirely free. It's not just going to work off of Blender. We'll work off a couple of other things as well. So let's get started and we'll see how we do this. So the main thing we're going to be using for this is on Maker World, and you can find this online at makerworld.com or if you've got a bamboo device you can just go to Maker World through that. Importantly we're going to go to Maker Lab at this tab here and that's going to give us a range of cool things that we can do and one of them is this Relief Sculpture Maker. Now you can see that I've already done these before as I was well making them to begin with but I'll show you the process so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to click on new project and then you can do this single sided or you can do it double sided so it depends on what you want to do. Now bear in mind that we're just going to take this and then be adding it to a new object. We want this as simple as possible so we're going to go to single sided relief. From here we can use some sort of AI generator or we can just drag and drop an image into this box. So I've got these images that I screenshotted they're just from Google, so I don't have any rights to these. But this one, for example, is actually just a picture of a joy toy, which is quite interesting. So let's just drag and drop that into here, and we're going to click Continue. From there, if you want something round, and this will give a final thing that's round. For example, if you wanted a coin, you can do that. I'm just going to go with free rectangle, and you can change the size of this if you want. We've got a white background, so it doesn't really matter, but we're going to click Remove Background here. And you can say if something's portrait, anime, or logo. I imagine this is important, especially for the anime, because of the weird proportions of the people that are there. We're going to click on general. Though I will say, when you click general, it does seem to recognize that this is a human being. And I'll talk about that later in the video towards the end. We'll click continue. And it will tell you how many people are ahead in the queue and how long it's going to take. So we've just gone down to zero in about 16 seconds. So I've just sped through that, but with that done, we get something that we can have a look at and scroll around. So there we go. And this is looking pretty good. In fact, it might actually be better than the first time I did it, which is interesting. So you do get slightly different results and you can click retry and it will come up with different things. Once you've done that, we're going to click continue. And this is the bit where it's going to get important. Now, if you wanted to print straight from this, you can change the size. You could put a frame on it. And you could do some other things. I don't even know what a hook is. But anyway, so the most important thing though that we're going to do is you've got two options here. Thickness is the thickness of this block that it's being put on. We don't care about that. But we do care a lot about the depth variation. Now, whatever you're intending to do with this, unless you're planning to print it straight from this, if you're going to use Blender, I would suggest you crank this up to as extreme as it can be. And I appreciate this looks ridiculous, but it's part of the process. So just go with me on this. I'll explain why in a second. So you wanna crank that up as high as it can go. Once you've done that, you just click export. And then we want to download this as an STL. In here, we can name this what we want. So I'm gonna call this Gladiator. And then click save. And we've got our STL ready to go. Now for this, I'm going to be using Blender. It's free, but you don't have to use Blender for this. But I'm going to just delete out that initial cube. If this is the first time you're using Blender, this won't be red. And I'm just going to turn on some screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing and how this works. So what I'm going to do is find my file. And then I'm going to just drag in my relief into this and click Import STL. And this should bring everything in. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel to zoom out. And we've got this here very big very exaggerated but it is the correct orientation now at this point if i just tab you won't have this menu system unless you've got an add-on but if i go into face mode you can see that this is going to be made up of lots and lots of tiny faces and if you've got a slower computer this is going to have an absolute heart attack so we're going to deal with that first we're going to come over here where it says modifiers i'm going to click shift and a to bring in a new modifier and i'm going to type in decimate and we're going to click decimate. Now what this does is this breaks down the amount of faces that you've got here and we want this way lower. We're going to leave it as collapse and we're going to put this ratio to like 
2. Hit enter and this is going to take a bit of time depending on how powerful your computer is. So this is what we've got at this point and your computer should start being a little bit faster at this point. We're going to come here and we're going to apply it and again that will take a little bit of time to work everything out. Now if we come into face mode you can see that we've got all of these faces and it's been nicely decimated down but importantly at the edge here you can see we get this slight curving to get this onto the relief. We don't really want that but more importantly this is why we had to exaggerate this character so much so that we get it away from the edge otherwise when we try to delete out this block you're going to end up with this rounding really close to the edge so this gives us a bit more leeway that's why we exaggerated so much. Now what we're going to do is delete this out so that we get just the relief that we want. So shift A mesh cube and that brings in a cube it's right at the bottom here I'm going to hit S and then maybe S again to get this really big and then G will allow me to move it. And I'm going to zoom in here and just G and get this to the point where it's just a little bit past that rounding of those edges just there. Shift and Z will go into X-ray mode which will help you out with this and that's sort of where we want to be. Then we're going to cut this out. So I'm going to click on my person or my gladiator, the relief. I'm going to come to my modifier click here and I'm going to type in boolean. Get a boolean, we want a difference boolean and I'd suggest you put this solver to float. Click here, click the object and then this has been cut away. But We can still see the big cube. So I'm going to click on the cube and hit H to hide it and you can see now we've got our gladiator ready to go. Now our relief is really extreme at this point and we want to get it back to the way it should be. So what we're going to do is click on this and we're going to have to apply this modifier. So I'm going to come here and apply. Then at this point we're going to need to go into an edit mode. You're going to hit tab and I get this menu because I've got an add-on called machine tools which makes everything easier for you to see. But you're just going to hit tab and you're going to click this icon up here or you can press three and then we're just going to click on this face. It's back. Then I'm going to press Shift and S, and importantly, we're going to move the cursor to the selected, which will put the cursor on this face. Now what we can do is tell Blender that whenever we want to change things, we want to change it around this cursor. Now I've got a lot of options up here because I've got different add-ons. Yours will look simpler than this, but just here where it says Transform Pivot Point, we're going to select 3D Cursor. Press Tab to go back into Object Mode, and then if you want to, this is quite nice, you can hit your gimbal on the X to get perfectly in the X. And then I'm just going to press S. And then we want to scale this. At the moment you'll notice it scales in every direction. We want this just on the Y axis. So I'm going to press Y. And that means I can now control the relief of this object. So I'm going to go to about there. So you can see how thick we made the relief at the beginning is no problem. It was just done so we could then cut the back of this off more easily. And that's pretty much all there is to this. Once you've done this once, it's easy to do. You just follow exactly the same process. So I'm not going to show it twice. But what's great about this is you can do this for multiple different things. If I come back to Maker World, you can see I've already done it for that other picture that I've got, which is this picture here of this now very exaggerated relief of some Greek architecture. Once again, we can just export it and go through the whole process again. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll just put that really quickly in the background so you can see that it is being done and this is exactly the same process. Now for this, what I've done is I've made the relief of this smaller than the relief of the gladiator. That way I could put the gladiator on top of it and it will still stick out over the front of it. Now we're not going to do this to scale, so let's just S to scale this gladiator down a little bit something like there. I can't remember what it was like on my shield originally. It was somewhere about there. And then I can just G and then Y this back until it's over the top of our architecture. So there we go. We've now got this as our combined relief, bringing these two objects together in a way that's way more interesting than having one by itself. And we didn't have to magically find a picture of a gladiator perfectly in front of some building with columns. So this makes life way easier that we can combine these different reliefs together and affect each one individually.
Now, before I finish, there is just one warning that I want to give, so just be aware of this, and that is that this doesn't always do everything perfectly. I'm assuming it's using some form of AI to try and generate this result. If you hate AI working on things, fine, but some people want to be able to do something quickly and simply, and the fact that this can do it means that they can access their creativity in a way that they couldn't before. So if you don't like it, quite frankly, cry somewhere else, I don't need to hear that you're disgusted and you're going to leave the channel. Just do it. It really doesn't bother me. I'm going to stick with technologies that make it easier for people to access and start using Blender because that's the thing that I want to see. So if I come to Relief Draft, we've got an example here of where this didn't go perfectly. And this is an issue with things that are AI related. They try to interpret things in a specific way. So if I put an image of this up on the right hand side, this was meant to be this space marine and it's done a pretty good job as I go up this, but it's had a big problem. It seems to want to try and find faces. So you can see here, this has created a face basically. It's tried to put like a nose in and turned a grill into a mouth. It doesn't quite know what it's doing. And I'm just guessing that at a distance, this probably wouldn't look too bad. It would actually just look like the guy didn't have a helmet on. So it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But do be aware that this won't always work perfectly. And we can always click retry. But you might want to try and use people that are bareheaded. And that gladiator earlier, which I was sort of surprised it worked, I'm guessing that what happened is because the helmet was so vastly different in size and proportions to a head, it could work out something different was going on. So just be aware that this isn't perfect, but it does a pretty damn good job. If you want to check it out, I'm putting this shield up on the Patreon so you can have a look at it. If you want to download it and use it in a project, you're more than welcome to, so feel free. But you can also see how I've curved this around using a lattice modifier. And in a recent video I did, I talked about how that can be achieved. So you can check that out if this is something you want to do, adding these reliefs to curved surfaces. If you found it useful, hitting that like button is a great way to say thanks, so I'd really appreciate that. Feel free to throw a comment in the comment section, especially if you've got some interesting uses for this or you've used it for something in the past and the sort of result that you got out of it. Or if you have any other programs that could do this. For example, you could do this creating a thing called an alpha texture, but that's going to be a bit annoying combining these different objects together, which is why I just like this quick, easy, free method. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.